Fuck you. <laughs> I'm going into this episode with very different energy. I want to see what happens. <laughs> Castellini. And I'm Chris Cherry. And we are real life friends, debatable, and depressed people. Less debatable. This is Brie and Chris are Depressed, a comedy mental health podcast that loosely follows the topics and structure of our web series, Sam and Pat are Depressed. First season on YouTube and Seeka TV right now. I created this show and do a bunch of other things, among them playing the character Sam. And I play Pat, and I also wrote for season two. And that's the end of the intro. Hi, Chris. Hi. This is... Literal minutes after we recorded the last absolute fucking train wreck of season uh, episode one. So let's debrief about that. How how bad do you think that went on a scale of one to bad? Um, on that scale, I think it was a three. I don't know what to do with that. Yes, and we only took one improv class. We didn't get that far. <laughs> we only got the yes. <laughs> so this is an episode about an episode called. Breaking in new therapists. This is the second episode of Sam and Pat are Depressed, and it is probably the most relatable one to like me personally. And like I know it's a dumb thing to say because Sam and Pat are Depressed is literally written about me and you. But this is the episode. This one and episode four are like the two episodes that are like my episode. These are like it's literally just me being mad. But to give you an idea of actually what happens in this episode, Sam, that's me, returns to from therapy to Pat. That's him. Uh, Still me. Still him. Quote unquote, fixing their kitchen sink. Complaining about how much I hate breaking in new therapists, which I have to do pretty frequently because there is a running gag about Sam constantly getting new therapists when she has, feels like it. I could have been reading off of the paragraph that I'd prepared, but I thought, no, that's not going to feel as natural. So I decided to go off on my own and guess what? Fucked it up. Well, you only took the one improv class. Yeah, I did. You and I go back and forth. You continue to fix this, the, the sink. And then by the end, you suggest that I should just write like my entire life story and give it to my therapist so that instead of spending eight weeks introducing myself and never actually talking about like what my current problems are, I can just get it over with in one episode or one session. You call it therapy sessions episodes, right? I did. <laughs> Actually, and I, I talk about I talk about this in the last episode, the train wreck, mm-hmm. uh, about how because of the way that I do therapy, I see mm-hmm. one therapist for a year, yeah, and then there's a hiatus, and then I start with a new therapist, right? And I very much think of it like television seasons. So you're about to start season four. I'm about to start season four of therapy right now. My last therapist was very enthusiastic. I was very into the idea of... Of thera- thinking about it like that? Uh, of thinking about it as a season of television. Um, but yeah, Breaking a New Therapist. A uh, lot to talk about here. But let's first talk about the episode itself, which was... I think we roughly shot in chronological order, at least at first. I think it was the second episode we shot. Yes. Yeah, Sorry. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And you were laying on the ground the whole time. Very fun. So we have an early... Uh, question from someone that we know so can you give me the stinger chris joe asks joe asks how did the script describe whatever it is that pat is doing was it in the script it was so as we talked about in the train wreck of episode one every episode of sam and pat has a absurdist prop gag or some other kind of visual gag that doesn't exist in our actual real world but in our what (laughs) In our what? In Brie our, Castellini? In our actual real world? In our war world? In our whale world? Chris, it's so hot in here. Please don't do this to me. Don't make me do this. In our West World season two on HBO? <laughs> I need to keep watching that. I, I realize Tessa Thompson is in it way more often and from all the promotional images. And I'm like, fuck, I gotta watch that show again. Not because I genuinely enjoy it, because it's okay. I just want to watch Tessa Thompson. This has become pretty awkwardly talks about Tessa Thompson because I still haven't figured out how to talk about women I'm attracted to. Anyways, so yes, Joe, um, the stupid things that Pat is doing underneath the sink where he is tapping with wrenches and taping was in fact in the script. The specifics were not, but um, the, the way I describe it is Pat lays underneath the kitchen sink, fixing a pipe, but doing it really badly. His toolbox is filled with a single wrench and a bunch of colorful duct tape and some loose screws. 
And that's what it was. And that's, I mean, that's like literally what it was. That was one of the ones that we stuck to pretty specifically. Andrew had the idea. Andrew wanted to put a bunch of tape of the undersink cabinet. Of the undersink cabinet. All right. All right. Yeah. All and right. Andrew had that idea. And so that became the, the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We wanted to really like land on that as sort of like the climax of the visual gag. Mm hmm. Was was that he's just making like a, a pretty design? Yeah, was that he was making a design, and that that was the thing that he was really focusing on more than anything else. Right. And other than that, just uh, banging on. Yeah, just sort of like randomly banging on things with a single wrench. Yeah, exactly. Which that's how I fix things. <laughs> you just sort of hope. You yeah. Bang with a wrench, and you just kind of hope. If the script called. For me to actually be fixing the sink, like I knew what I was doing, I would have done exactly the same thing. Yeah. I think that was, it's probably one of the visual gags that I'm less proud of. Like, it's the first one that we have, so people are generally like, oh, this is funny. But then, like, it gets way better. This one, I think, didn't work because I refused to buy tape. Yeah. (laughs) Because, like, I thought I had more colorful tape than I ended up having. Which, knowing you, was a decent bet. Yeah, and I definitely used to, but I think we used it all on Brains, um, our other web series, and I just, like, never refilled my tape stuff. And this is a really good story, but it ends on, we have silver duct tape, we have brown packing tape. A lot of earth tones. A lot of earth tones, and then one really skinny, like, Tashi tape that I got from a craft store. And so it was not quite... The, like, colorful thing that Andrew wanted and really that I wanted. But I was like, no, this this we're filming this cheap and I'm not buying tape if I don't have to. I have three colors of tape and we're living with it. And I kind of wish I'd bought more tape. This is also... Don't tell Andrew. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's not going to listen to this, I guess. <laughs> no, he's not at all. Um, I also... This was the start of a running theme in the filming of season one of Sam and Pat of... Assuming that I, Chris Cherry, will make props or will make will make things as we film, and that like I I will put I will decorate tape in a creative way mm-hmm. or um, I will make a ransom. I note. will make a ransom note Not in a creative a way, <laughs> and while I am also concentrating on remembering my lines yeah. and acting uh-huh. and I can only do one thing at a time. It's true. That's and, the thing I know about you. Yeah. And then wrote the script and said, Hey Chris, you should do this thing. Yeah. And I, yeah, I can only do one thing at a time and acting and remembering my lines are already two different things. That's fair. That's super fair. And I would apologize, but I refuse. 100% fair. Yeah. No, I mean like it's hard for anyone who has to do like, stage business and act like that's just like a lot of things to think about especially because we hadn't like rehearsed any of it like we'd rehearsed our lines a lot um and we like anything anytime that we had like blocking which wasn't which was rare but like when we did have it like we rehearsed that a little bit but like you know we only had so many arts and crafts supplies so you you really didn't get a chance to like practice your lines with like the prop action and like anyone would be thrown by that and we did not care (laughs) we were just like chris do this thing why aren't you doing this thing I also assumed, and I don't know why, that we would have had finished props ready. Yeah. And that I was just going to... In some cases, that was a fair assumption. In others, it was not. And that I was going to be recreating, like, finished things. Um, Yeah, no, we didn't do that. We'll talk about that as we get to the more complicated uh, gags throughout the season. Yeah, but this was was definitely the beginning of that running theme. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this one you just had to, like, sometimes tear off a piece of tape or tap something with a wrench. I have nothing else to say about this episode. All right. <laughs> this is one that I don't like as much, not because it's not a good episode, because it's a very good episode, and it's, as I've already mentioned, very relatable to me as a human. Um, but I, I was wearing the tightest shirt that I was wearing all season, and Andrew made me sit backwards in a chair that had, like, not all of its back. So there's just like a really nice little frame of my tummy in all the wide shots. And there's we only used the wide shot once because I edited it. And I was like, I refuse to go to this wide shot anymore. But And also they shot me from below the entire episode, which fair enough wasn't the most unflattering that I looked the entire season. But like this was definitely probably one of the least flattering episodes of me 
and the way that I look. Yeah. And I was not thrilled about that. You did write an episode <laughs> in which I am laying on the floor and looking up at you. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah. <laughs> which episode? Fuck me. I'm losing my mind. I thought you were doing a bit. No, I... I yeah, I was. I definitely was. I didn't just, like, pass out for half a second and wake up and be afraid because I didn't know where I was. Um, that wasn't what happened. We picked a good day to do this. Yeah. No, I just didn't think about it. Like, when I was writing, I was like, this will be funny. This is a thing he can be doing. And then we got there and Andrew's like, yeah, we have to shoot you from beneath because we have to shoot you from his perspective. I'm like, fuck. And it's also bad because, like, in our other web series, I get to be the cutest. Like, I used to feel weird about that, but now I'm like, fuck, I wish I could be the cute one again. Because in Brains, like, Allison's whole thing is that she's, like, the one person that uses makeup and, like, does her hair. And so, like, I got to look cute for every episode, and it mattered. So, like, if I didn't look cute for a minute, I had to, like, you know, I got to take a break and go, like, do something cute to me. Um, but this epi- this season, this series is not the same thing. No, in this series, I am the cute one. Yeah, in this series, you're the cute one. And honestly, like, watching you get your lipstick put on in the morning, I was like... Right? I want that to be me. I refuse to do my own makeup. <laughs> yeah, he's a big diva like that. Yeah. But yeah, that that was definitely something that I didn't expect to be such a thing in Sam and Pat was like realizing that I wasn't going to be shot in the most flattering ways and that was the point. It didn't occur to me until we were on set when I was like, oh, I'm not going to look good in this show. <laughs> I do think, to be fair also, I this was... The second thing that we had shot conventional filmmaking, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you had shot yeah. Ace and Anxious, and you weren't in that. But I was that. not in that, yeah. Um, yeah, so this was the first time you were acting mm-hmm. for... This is the first con- time I was acting. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time... <laughs> Full you stop. ...ever acted in your life. Uh-huh. This is the first time you were acting for conventional filmmaking. Yeah, with the camera so much closer to me. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I just... A lot of things happened all at once that I wasn't expecting even though I should have and it just it's not that it was bad like I'm fine with it and like it's definitely less stressful on the day to think like oh I don't have to like worry about my lipstick all day I don't have to worry that my hair looks cute it's like if it looks bad it's fine because I'm playing a depressed person but at the same time it's like but I'm also getting a camera really close to my face and then sharing this with hopefully millions of people and I would like to look at least a little bit cute Especially since this is the most successful thing that we've done so far. Yeah, well, no, that's not true. Ace and Anxious just surpassed 17,000 views on YouTube, so we'll see if this will be the most popular thing. This is certainly the most popular thing uh, out of people that we know personally. Yeah. It's the one that people talk to us about the most, which is nice. That's all I have to say about the shooting of the episode itself, because I don't really remember it. Like, there was not... We shot it very fast. Yeah. It was a really easy setup. The end. Exactly. So let's move on to the topic of the episode. Which is breaking a new therapist, which you have done three times now and are about to do a fourth time, and which I have done twice now and I'm about to do a third time. We're actually both going back to therapy within like a week of each other. Yeah, with uh, most likely. I'm I haven't gotten a date yet, but it should be around the time that you're starting again. I'm starting on July seventeenth. I think mine will probably be like a week or two later. Yeah. Um, But yeah, we're both starting therapy again. Mm Mm-hmm. As viral marketing as viral. for season two of Sam and Pat. Yep, yep, yeah. We're not we're not going for us. No. Yeah, for me, it's been almost it's been over a year and a half since I've been in therapy, and really, like, it's been you know, what ten years? <laughs> because the first time I went to therapy, I was sixteen, and I am now twenty six. Um, and for you, it'll be the first time in like a month. Yeah. But um, that it's still regardless, we're meeting a totally new stranger that we're paying money to. To talk about our feelings. As opposed to old familiar strangers. Mm-hmm. Who I make pay me to yeah. talk about my feelings. Um, by the way, you owe me $10. All right. Now that you've like done this process a couple of times, are you like, are you excited to get a new therapist? I know you liked your last therapist, but like, are you excited for like a new beginning? A little bit. I mean, I, I've liked all my therapists. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been very lucky, I think. It's Going to be weird this time, and I, I kind of talked about this in the garbage episode before this. Uh, I don't remember what we talked about in the garbage episode, so this is new to me. That's why I'm going to recap it. Cool. Um, I kind of talked about how one of the things that's weird going into this time is that this time I am the most well that I've been in a while. Mm-hmm. 
when I went into therapy the first time, I was definitely in crisis. Mm -hmm. And it was very easy to tell a story about why I needed to be in therapy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, It was very easy to explain this happened to me and this happened and this happened and I did this and I should be in therapy. Mm -hmm. And, and then, so through that first year, a lot of it was digging out of crisis. Sure. And even the second year, a lot of it was digging out of crisis. And Mm -hmm. when I started my second therapist, it was the same thing of just this happened to me and this happened to me Mm -hmm. and I did this. And I need to be in therapy. But now it's far enough away from all the things that happened. Mm -hmm. And I've made, not to toot my own horn, a lot of progress in the ability to toot my own horn. And You're you're looking really worried because you know I'm going to say something gross. I know. Every time you say toot your own horn, you like wince a little like you're just waiting for it. I'm worried because I feel like I'm already saying something gross. I don't even, (laughs) I don't need you to wince. Like, I would, if I was recording this podcast by myself, I would have winced. That's fair. Um, But normally, you let me toot your horn, is what I was going to say. (laughs) hate you so much. Um, But anyways, um, while, not to whack yourself off, but... Are you, that was... Yeah, no, that was, I I was giving you a transition back into it. Did you not pick up on that? I hate you so much, just as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, As a collaborator, you're great. Um, But as a human being, you're garbage. Yeah. Thank God people gave us money to make this thing. Otherwise, we would not be in the same room together. No. God, no. Especially not this awful hot room. (laughs) This awful, awful hot room. Um, But not to... Anyway. Not to choke your own goose, but... (laughs) How many of these do you got? (laughs) Just rattle off. That was the last one. The, the, The goose one already took a lot out of me. Just like your goose Christ. <laughs> gets a lot out of you when you. But the point is that I'm a lot better than I used to be, and it becomes harder to kind of to tell the story mm-hmm. of me in therapy and what I want to do in therapy and why I feel like I need to be in therapy. Mm-hmm. Because like you can tell the old stories, but that's no longer like what's immediately relevant in your life. Exactly. Like, it's certainly something that might come up eventually, but, like, it's not necessarily the reason you're in therapy now. Exactly. And I don't want to start off a new season. Mm-hmm. Um, without stakes? Without stakes. No, I don't. Well, I don't. But I also, you joke, I talked about stakes <laughs> so much in therapy. That doesn't you have surprise me at no all. no idea. So, yeah, I don't want to start off this new like relationship with this new therapist mm-hmm. harping too much on things that happened at this point three years ago. Right. Because you've already had three people talk you through that. Exactly. And that's not the thing that I want to work on now. What is what you want to work on now without going into obviously too many like gritty details? Well, I think because yeah, I would say that I was definitely in crisis. Mm-hmm. I would agree. Yeah. Three years ago. I was too, but I didn't go yeah. to therapy because I'm an idiot. And Really, the last two years, or like the last, like the first two years Mm -hmm. of therapy were definitely about digging me out of crisis. Yep. Um, And getting me back to the place that I was before the things happened to me. Right. But the thing is, the place that I was before the things happened to me wasn't like, great <laughs> just because you weren't in crisis doesn't mean that you yeah were in crisis i wasn't i was never really a healthy person and mood <laughs> i was trying to think what's the most obnoxious thing i could say that it's also still an accurate like response and that's what i came up with this has been behind the scenes of the podcast <laughs> definitely this last year was a lot more about getting me to a place where I'm more healthy than I was before then. Mm -hmm. Like, getting me to a place where just, like, I'm an actual livable, workable human being. Sure. Which I was really faking it hard for a long time. And and so that's the sort of thing that I want to do. But that's a much harder conversation to have. Yeah. Like, how would you? Like, so I'm your therapist. Let's role play. Let's not. Let's role play. 
All right. I the idea of you as anyone's therapist, especially mine. Uh, Chris. So, uh, what brings you here today? What are you What are you hoping to work on this next year? I really I don't like. Why are you putting your hand there? Because it's thoughtful. I'm like David. Yeah, she's putting her hand on her. Yeah, I'm putting my my fist under my my chin yeah, exactly. to look thoughtful. Yeah, it's not working. It, I'm role playing. Yeah. Stay in the moment, Chris. Um, I just want to be able to more, like, healthily and successfully toot my own horn. Well, can I can I see what you're working with? Jesus Christ. <laughs> You know, you did this. You did this. Here's the thing. You brought that up. Here's the thing. What I try to do uh-huh. is walk right up to the line. Yeah, sure. And then like just bring us to the line and mm-hmm. then walk away from the line. So you're saying that you like to edge. That's exactly what I'm saying. And you keep crossing the line. Yep. I am doing the job, the hard work. I might add, of demarcating where the line is. That's true. And then you stand there and you're like, here it is. This is the line. And then I just shove you right over. I, yeah. This is Sparta the fuck out of you. Yeah, exactly. And then I talk about choking your goose. Jesus Christ. So, um... Who is this podcast for? <laughs> I would, if if I were listening to it, I wouldn't be. Yeah, that's, um, that's an accurate representation of what the listening experience would be like. Cool. Well, we've talked about you enough. Yeah. I'm going back to therapy for the first time in a year and a half. And it's going to be especially weird, both because I will be about to start filming second season of Sam and Pat, which I don't know how to talk about, which we'll get to in a second. But also it'll be like three days, literally three days before um, my day jobs film festival happens. And I will likely be very stressed out. And I'm actually taking like two hours off of work to go to this first therapy session. And I'm like... I'm actually kind of pissed about it because even though that's like a very good time to start therapy because I'm like, I'm going to be very stressed out. It's also like, it's going to take over everything and it'll be over in the, by the time I see her again. So yeah. it's sort of like, I'm going to have so much to say about this thing that's happening in two days, but then it'll be over and will no longer be relevant to my life. And I'm kind of like peeved. And so now I don't really know what to do. Like, should I ignore that? The obvious stressor in my immediate like future to then like, go the full way into like, so this is who I am. I'm a bad, unhealthy person. Make me better. Or do I focus on the thing that's immediately relevant? What is the most efficient use of my one hour of time? Tell me. I mean, I think you'd get there. I don't think there's any way that you don't mention it. I know, but I also don't want to make it the whole episode. The the whole episode, fuck me. Um, But I also don't want to make the whole session about it because I like... Have been looking forward to going back to therapy, weirdly. And I have a lot of other shit to say. Well, it's... It just feels very unfair, is what I'm saying. It's the first time you're meeting a new therapist. Yeah, which is also a bad time to meet a new therapist. It's like right before a massive event, but then it's not going to be relevant for another year. Exactly. No, but I think, like, it won't take up that much time just because there's going to be a decent amount of time given to explaining who you are you have to explain why you're at this job and who you are like you know yes i don't that's the other thing like is that what you talk about like do i talk about like when when you introduce yourself to a therapist like what is your chris cherry elevator speech even like not even talking about like why you know you're in therapy like how do you explain yourself explain yourself just to a therapist or just to anyone no to a therapist this last time i did it it was very awkward i feel because the first two times I did it, I had a good story. Um, like, um, because generally when you're meeting a therapist, you're kind of answering the question, um, and this is a point that you have on your notes, mm-hmm. you're answering the question, why are you in therapy? Yeah. And so like, it's, or it's kind of, you're just sitting there, I guess, I guess you're all wondering why I called you here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so for me, it's just about that. It's about explaining, hi, like I could say like, hi, I Chris Cherry and I am a writer and I moved here to New York to write things or whatever. But generally that's all, I'm just giving enough backstory, at least for the first two years, I was just giving enough backstory so that I could tell the story of the bad things that happened to me in a way that made sense. Yeah. I think my problem, and this isn't just me in therapy, but me as a person, is I never know how much context I need to give somebody. So I just think, 
so I should give you all of it. And, you know, in, in the episode, Sam says that it takes her up to eight sessions to fully introduce herself to a therapist because she goes chronologically, which is a joke, but also makes fucking sense to me. Like... I could talk about the immediate problem, but I feel like you need more than that because I'm a person who is, I think is very special. I think I'm super special and you cannot possibly understand what kind of fuck uppery I am unless you hear my entire life story. So let's get into it. But then I don't know where I would go from there because there are some things from, you know, my past that I'm over, but that definitely had a very big impact and, you know, probably still impact me in a myriad of ways, but they don't like depress me. And so then it's like, Do I bring up the old stories? How relevant are they still? I feel like they inform who I am. But how much, see, this is the problem. This is my, this is what my first therapy session is gonna be, is me gonna be like talking out loud to myself about like, what should I be talking about in this therapy session? I think, no, I think God the answer, no, you just have to, I do think you do have to answer the question of why are you in therapy? Because I'm very depressed and bad at living. And that's I'm, ba- I'm bad at being alive in the world without being bad to myself. <laughs> then I think, like... Is that a good way to introduce yourself? 100% yes. Um, but I think, no, I think it's a thing of, like, in that case, I would just probably go in and explain, like, or here's a day in the life of me, and here's all the ways that I am doing things, I think, suboptimally. That's interesting. I actually like that because yeah. that's 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 see, I I love structure and like I'm like rock hard right now when you like gave me a new structure that I didn't even think about. But no, like that I like that a lot is giving her a day in the life because boy, there are so many points of the day that I just fuck up. And what's nice about that <laughs> is that you can sort of segue from a general day in the life uh-huh. into terrible fest. That's true because a lot of the things that you do mm-hmm. in your life are related to your job or yep. related to terrible. And you can kind of segue in from, this is what I'm like on a normal day. And right now is an interesting time. Yeah, no, that's uh, true. Because I, I had a, the reason I had this therapy session um, is because I went for my first physical in like two years. Mm-hmm. And the doctor recommended that I go see their in-house um, counselor. And uh, and she asked me, she's like, oh yeah, so, so, so you want to go back to therapy? I'm like, yeah, I, I definitely do. And she's like, okay, we should get you an appointment. And then she's like, so what, what is your, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I actually sort of already had this like intake interview, but with like a just other kind of doctor. Yeah. And she, and, and she asked me when the last time I had a panic attack was, cause I mentioned that was something that um, happens to me. And my, immediately I was like, oh, like two years ago. And then I was like, wait, no, it was a week and a half ago. And then I was like, oh fuck, I really need to go to therapy. Like it's that thing where it's like, I've been talking about going back to therapy for so long. And then I was like, oh no, I need to go back to therapy. I had a, the last panic attack I had was now two weeks ago during a work meeting. I was in a meeting talking to people and reading off of an agenda and also having a massive panic attack. And I remember thinking at the time, which I then apparently immediately forgot, but like, this is a bad thing that's happening right now. This should not be a thing that I do. So that got very real. I feel like that's what this podcast is supposed to be. Yeah, no, I... I, I, I think we're hitting our stride. Uh, yeah, no, I think it is. Um, What's your reaction to what I just said? <laughs> I would, if I were you, I would tell that story to the therapist. Like, that's, like, that's a thing. Like, I think... This is, like, my dry run for my therapy session. 100% it is. This is so good. Yeah. And then, you just play this episode for your therapist. See? And honestly, I fucking wish I could. I feel like what every therapist should do is, like, I feel like when you get a new therapist, it should be, like getting your roommate assignment when you first go to college because you know how they like send you like a little packet or like mm-hmm. they send you like their social media and like who mm-hmm. they are and like their their expected major and all that stuff i feel like you should get that when you have a new therapist or at least they should get that like i feel like i should be expected to prepare like a packet mm-hmm. for them so like these are things you need to know about me like so this is actually a good example. So there's this company called Stitch Fix, which sponsors a lot of podcasts, which I recently tried out and very much enjoyed. You fill out a like online quiz about your style and like your sizes and what you're looking for in clothes. And oh, then, yeah. yeah, I think it Schmanners is one of the people that uh, either Schmanners or also Mibim Bam is sponsored by them, um, which is why I learned about them. But anyways, you fill out this survey about like what kinds of things you like to wear and what kind of things you're looking to like 
get new versions of. Like, you know, right now I want summer clothes and dresses specifically. And then you give all of this information and also like your social media accounts and like photos of you and, and like comparison things of like, I like this outfit, but not this outfit. And you send it to somebody and one of their stylists like looks through all this information about you and then sends you a little care package of five pieces of like clothing and accessories. And then if you like it, you keep it. If you don't, you send it back to them. I feel like that should be how therapy works. I feel like the intake interview, she should already have like a ton of context on me. She should have read my Twitter account. She should see all of Sam and Pat. She should like have, you know, uh, my, my top five most depressing moments. Like I feel like I should write her an essay of my top five most depressing moments. And she should already know that before I go in there. And it's really frustrating to me that I have to tell her all that at once. She should already know. She should be following me on Twitter. She should know what's going on first. Wink, the wine service also works like that. And I think <laughs> either one of you, again, could just give us a sponsorship. Do you see us. how seamlessly it would work out? So seamlessly. We'd be doing it so good. We can also get a sponsorship from Seamless. That's true. Yeah, we use. Honestly, we should. We Although use apparently a- Seamless has really bad um, business practices. Oh. Yeah. Not surprising. I mean, yeah, I'm not. But yeah, but give us money. But give us oh, money. We'll take it. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, don't get it twisted. We will take your money, Seamless. But you do know, you, I... do you think that 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 you would you agree, or do you think that you like only giving them what you give them? There is, I don't know. Like, I there is a. I think one of the reasons that they don't do that. I mean, a they don't do that because especially social media is like really new Mm -hmm. um i found out too late that my last therapist wrote her thesis on therapy and social media that's funny and and i wish i could have talked to her more about that because i'm fascinated (laughs) um but i think but i think it is a thing that therapists think that's very important that in order for trust to sort of work that they know the things that you reveal to them and like you feel comfortable gradually revealing stuff. I mean, fair enough. But also like if I choose to give them access to certain things, that's what isn't that what that is. I, mean, I just yeah, want I you do... to do it on your own time, not my time. <laughs> and that is 100% fair. And like, no, sometimes I do wish that like, like my, do you ever therapy... just pull up a tweet? Like, no, this is actually, how... can, give me a second. Yeah. I don't, I can explain. I've already explained this better. Like, let me just read this tweet to you and you will understand what I mean. Yeah. Or just so that they already have some idea of, what's going on Mm -hmm. with me definitely um but then although that's just that just also seems like an unfortunate thing to have to have your therapist do to like follow all of your social media like for (laughs) all of their for all of their patients like personal info in therapy is very one way yeah uh, and Honestly, I prefer it because I think if I knew too much about my therapist, I'd feel too guilty not asking. Like if I knew that like they had a new niece or nephew, then like I would feel bad not asking up about like their new baby niece or nephew. Or like if I knew that they you know were stressed out about their thesis, I would be like, let's not talk about me right now. Like how is your thesis going? Like do you are you stressed out? Like literally, that's what I would do. And it's not because I'm a good person. It's just because I'm so anxious about being seen as a good person that I. <laughs> I, I feel like a need to ask them about themselves. So I don't want to know anything about my therapist. I want to think that they s- cease to exist after I leave the room. I'm the opposite. Interesting. I d- want to know a lot of my therapist. And this might be a thing that we talk about more in episode five, I think. is. Yeah. Cyberstop? Yeah. 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 But I am the opposite in that I do want to know. Like, it is very important for me that I humanize my therapist. Yes, yeah. No, I don't. I want them to be. A, if Honestly, if I could get therapy from a robot, I would do it. I don't want a person. I here's my thing is I don't trust not a person. I'm also just fascinated with therapy as I mean, like, yeah, that's fair. And so I want to know about like I always wanted to know like about what their things are, how they feel about therapy, what they did, what their thesis was about. Like I How does you how do you think that will impact your own therapy? Though? Like do you think that that will inform the way you talk to them? Like what do you think will change if you know that information? I think that It'll better under like help me understand the way that they see me. But isn't that dangerous? Like, shouldn't you 
be like keep that sort of yourself in the dark about that because then you'll overthink it and what if you start to overcorrect like oh I think you see me in this way because of the, what your thesis is about or whatever so I'm going to try and tell stories that show a different side of me to like tweak the way you see me I get yeah, you could I I don't do that mm-hmm. I no I think um, I'm very honest in therapy Ugh. And, no but I like I don't know Plus, it's just, I, and I tend to have very, like, chummy, jokey relationships with my therapists. And that's, I feel like that's easier for me to do if I know a bit more about them as a person. And, like, how I sort of, like, I, like, I, it's, it feel it feels, also, just, it feels easier to have, like, honest open conversations if it feels if it doesn't feel like it's so one way if it feels like like a conversation rather yeah, than an interview exactly because there is that thing because there is the inherent imbalance of you know a lot about me and i don't know anything about you there's a line about that in next to normal i wanted to get to the the, the last like real thing that we were going to talk about yeah, which sure. is talking about sam and pat in therapy <laughs> because i know we started sam and pat during your third season of therapy, right? Yes. So your most recent therapist. Yes. So only one therapist of yours knows about Sam and Pat. Exactly. And she is a fan. She is a fan. She loves Sam and Pat. That's, I love, How do you remember how you brought that up to her? You know, I don't remember exactly. I remember uh, that I pressured you to do it. I pressured both oh. you and Andrew to do it and then immediately tell me what they thought. I mean, I was going to anyway. Right. Because um, you're very honest with your therapist. I'm very, I am very Maybe. honest with my therapist. And also just because it was a thing that was happening mm-hmm. in my life. And also, why wouldn't I tell them? That's the, like, because I, they would find that fascinating. Like, why on earth would we not talk about the fact that I have a, now have a show about therapy while I'm in therapy? Like, why would we not talk about that? That's and, like... That's fair. Um, but now that you're you're going to a new therapist... When are you going to... When is appropriate to bring that up? Oh, I'm going to mention that first, Sasha. Really? Oh, yeah. In... Okay. How? Because I don't think I am. I genuinely, like, unless it comes up naturally during one of my ramblings, I don't think it's relevant. Uh, no, I think, like, A, it's what... It's the most recent sort of work thing, or one of the That's most true. recent... And it'll be happening in, like, a month. Exactly. So, A, it will just be practically affecting my life. hmm um so they need to know right um b like it's an interesting hook (laughs) for me as a person like if anything i don't have the bad stuff that happened to me anymore so i need something right yeah and and also just like it also helps them know that like i definitely get the motions like understand the sort of motions of therapy because i think some people especially when they start are going into therapy because they they don't know what they want from it sure. and they don't kind of have understanding of how it works or right. what they're supposed to be doing or they like yeah or someone told them they need to go to therapy mm-hmm. or it's like the, when you call an it person because something's wrong with your computer and they're trying to be like have you turned your computer on and off and you're like yes i've already done that you're basically trying to like impress upon the it person that no i'm not a fucking idiot i've done all the basic stuff now let's actually get into it in fact i star in a web series about it perfect that that exact thing yeah it is i think it is that and i think it's just there's a line in i don't it's in another episode um that of sam and pat Pat, oh okay that i that i say that pat says that i in my whole my whole body disagrees with (laughs) which which is your therapist doesn't have to like you (laughs) i very much want my therapist to like me and i don't because I don't trust anything they say if they don't like me. I mean, that's fair. And that's actually something we'll talk about if we get a season two of this companion podcast. Because there's an episode about, I think my therapist thinks I'm mean. Yeah. Or something like that. Exactly. Two, which is something I write about a lot. And enough. so if I, like, want my therapist to like me really quickly, I think that's a good help. Like, uh, that makes me seem like an interesting person to them personally. Because uh, it's a nice way of talking about me, but also... Um, Talking about them. It's like a show-not-tell thing, but also that's flattering to them. Exactly, yeah. It's Dale Carnegie. Um, 
Interesting. See, I feel like, and maybe this is just because, like, I created the show, so it's slightly different for me to talk about it. Um, Even though, like, obviously at this point, we're very much, like, Mm -hmm. equal level at this point. But, like, I feel like it's weird for me to say, like, I created and star in a web series about therapy. Like, as an interaction. Well, first off, don't say it like that. How else do you say it? It's what I did. But, no, but, but, like, that's what I, like, I remember, I don't, so Sam and Pat didn't exist the last time that I was in therapy, but like ever since we started this show and ever since I know that you and Andrew talk about it, like I'm fascinated by how you guys talk about it. Cause I'm like, I don't know how to bring it up. Like, I don't, it, it I don't, I don't, I don't know how, like what transitions into that. Like, I guess it, it will be easier now that I'm thinking about it because we're shooting in like a month yeah. where like it is like it's imminent. Mm-hmm. So it's something that will come up. But at the same time, like, if it hadn't been that way, I don't know at what point during my, like, I'm Brie Castellini and I'm depressed, I bring up the fact that I've made this show. I See, that's the thing. I, I'm i going to open with it. I'm going to, like, it's going to be, like, one of, like, the first five or six things. Here's five facts about Chris Cherry. Exactly. Number one, I'm very depressed. Number two, I know how this works. Number three, the reason I know how this works is because I work on a show called Santa Fat and Depressed. I mean, that's not the reason that I know. It's Number just four, ex- I drink a lot of Coca-Cola. Number so five. much. Um, I have some right I have some right now as I'm talking to you, therapist. Mm-hmm. I actually don't. This is a tr- true sad fact about me. Um, I tend to bring a drink to therapy because mm-hmm. one day I went to therapy and I was thirsty and I liked doing that. Yeah. But I knew that I could not buy a soda. Because it would make you look bad? No. I mean, that too. But mostly because I knew that if I brought a soda to therapy, I would start a new habit and add a soda to my day because I would just do it all the time. I would. Don't you already do it all the time? Because like, I feel like every time I see you, you have a soda. I know. Then I, I'm saying I would be adding another one. I would be. That's what I'm saying is that like I already drink too much soda and I don't want to add another routine soda to yeah. my week. You don't want to make the like the healthy thing you do be linked to one of your vices. Exactly. Or just, yeah, I just did not want to start the habit of, oh, I'm going to therapy. I buy a soda. So I get tea. I get iced tea. Hmm. Well, we've been talking for a literal hour now. So All right. um, our final question comes from a person that we know. So this is another moment of... This is a, this is Joe Asks. What's your favorite place to get tacos? Uh, or what your, is your favorite kind of tacos? Because at the end of this episode of Salmon Pattern Press, I order tacos. Um, let's see. There's a. Well, I don't get tacos there. Um, I don't eat. I don't eat tacos as much. Yeah, as like ta- tacos is like a very specific type of Mexican food. I think both of us more often just order Mexican food. Yeah. Um. There's a place where we used to live. That I used to order from all the time. Mm-hmm. Called Domo Taco on Franklin in Brooklyn. Yep. Um, and I still go there sometimes if I happen to be on Franklin. Um, just because I'm said it's sort of Asian fusion. I don't think I've ever actually been there. And it's I've good. been there for two years. Yeah. It's real I, I like it a lot. Um and if they want to sponsor us. <laughs> um But like yeah, and it's sort of it's but I usually get a chicken quesadilla. Okay. Um but it's got like sort of kind of sweet, spicy kind of you know salsa. salsa. Yeah. Um it's like yeah, or it's I don't know if it's it's not a salsa, it's a different kind of I don't know, there's like different kinds of queso and stuff. And, <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's really good. good. I like breakfast burritos. So I, I try to specifically order from Mexican food places that have like an, an all-day breakfast menu mm. because breakfast burritos are objectively the best food. Mm. They're the best food. Okay. There's a period at the end of that sentence. All right. If you thought I was going to continue that sentence, I fucking wasn't. I, I'm... Okay. Do you hear me, Chris? They're no. the best food. So I'm Chris Cherry. And I'm Brie Castellini. And I'm still depressed, are you? No. Oh my god, I'm cured! Just kidding. I'm very depressed. See you next week! That feels like an episode. Yeah.